Okay, now today we're going to talk about um, crankshafts for Austin 7s. And in particular, we're going to talk about the pressurised crankshafts for the racing Austin 7s and the Ulsters. And so um, this, and, and the Phoenix crankshaft in particular. Now, the standard Austin 7 crankshaft has um, two oil ways that are like holes drilled in the, in the cross piece here, and they're bolted together and they're like semicircular underneath so that they um, form an oil gallery. Now, the problem with those is that um, because of the centrifugal force, they tend to fill up with all the sludge in there and they get blocked and that causes the bearings to seize at the back and the front probably as well. But um, so that's not a very clever idea. So what Phoenix have done is they've made a new crankshaft like so and they've drilled it so that the drilling goes right the way through and it's plugged at each end with an Allen bolt. And uh, so that's how they uh, get the oil from one end of the crank to the other. Now the front of the crankshaft has a dog on it like so and the dog screws into the um, front of the crankshaft and holds the bearings and the timing gear onto the crankshaft. It's quite an important piece of equipment and so it goes up tight and um, the oil is fed into this dog at the front here. You can see the little holes and you have a brass bush which fits over and the bush has to be carefully made because it has to be lined with um, a Hoyt number 11 which is a, a white white metal bearing and then machined out to, to the exact size of this um, dog here so there's a good free fit in there so it can turn easy. Now the, the other thing is what I do on mine is because the crankshafts tend to flex this end of the dog tends to wiggle up and down a little bit and so it's a good idea to have rubber o-rings around each end of the dog Oh, sorry, on each of the bearing, so that it can move slightly. And that gives you a little bit of compliance in the, in the system. So that's the first thing you have to know. Um, and the same thing happens at the back here, because the, the back end of the crankshaft, um, the flywheel acts like a gyroscope, and it can't twist like that. So when that crank flexes, it tends to put extra load through the back of the bearing here. So that's the other thing you need to be aware of. Now, the other thing is that the bearings on the, on the main bearings, sorry, the, <laughs> these are the main bearings, front and back. So two bearing crankshaft. And the Conrod bearings, or the big end bearings as they're called, have um, shell bearings on these uh, rods. And these are um, standard pattern rods, but they're made to suit the um, the Austin 7 crankshaft. I mean, you can get Carrillo rods, which I run in my uh, racing Austin, but um, they're a slightly different design. In fact, the H section goes the other way on the rod here. But um, these are standard rods and they're perfectly okay. Um, so on a standard crankshaft, on a standard bearings, you use these bearings here, which are Renault. So it's all designed to, to fit Renault bearings. They're just the right width and everything else. And they're four cylinder, 1951. And um, the a number for the bearing is AEB 4319 STD, which stands for standard. And then it says Renault. And they're made by Federal Mogul. Um, and they're, they're perfectly satisfactory bearings. And they're run on the standard Renault uh, big end bearing diameters. Now sometimes you have to grind the bearing down because it's got damage for some reason or other and you have to put a, a bearing which is slightly uh, smaller in diameter in the rod in order to accommodate the grinding on the on the on the crankshaft. And these Renault rods are these are um, uh, minus 0.25 millimeters and they are available from Phoenix um, by special order. I have some here. Um, they're the same number, uh, but they're uh, minus 0.25 millimeters. 
So that's the second thing you need to know. Now, the third thing you need to know is that on these rods, there is no drilling between the bearing and the, and the top of the con rod here. So there's no oil gets up there because you do not need to have oil spraying up into the, into the um, beneath the piston to cool the piston because there's plenty of oil comes around the side of the bearings and falls up because it's pressurized. Now on the standard crankshaft, which is the unpressurized one, you have to have a little hole at the top here, which feeds through here as well. And that puts pressure, puts oil up into the underside of the piston. And you have to have oil baffles in the, in the top of the block, top of the crankcase, I should say, which these run through so that you don't get too much oil up there. And that's why those baffles are quite important. And you can get a Phoenix crank, which works on a spit and hope, but you have to use the baffles and have a little hole in here, which is why you can never use nippy rods on a pressurized crankshaft, otherwise you lose all the oil up there, uh, because the, a, a nippy crank is split and hope. These, these are pressurized. Um, and they're similarly the other way around. So that gives you an idea of how the um, Phoenix crank and everything, how the setup works. And um, good luck. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye-bye.